Hey guys, Richard Rosamond here and welcome back to another exciting tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a closer look at how to work non-destructively using ultra flares in Adobe Photoshop. Alright, let's get started. So a typical workflow for ultra flares, including many other Photoshop plugins, would be as follows. We load our image we want to work with. Then we launch Ultra Flares by going to Filters, Richard Rosamond, Ultra Flares. We load a flare preset. We position it in the preview window. Make some adjustments using the global settings. And apply it by clicking OK. The problem with this workflow is that the flare gets baked into our image as it should. This means we cannot make any further adjustments and our source image has been permanently modified. This is what we call a destructive workflow. Let's undo this and take a look at how to work with ultra flares non-destructively. The first thing we're going to do is make a copy of our layer. We achieve this by going to the Layers panel in Photoshop, clicking on the top right options, and selecting Duplicate Layer. A prompt will ask us for a layer name, which we can call something more descriptive, such as Flare. You can now see we've made a copy of our layer. Now we'll launch Ultra Flares on our layer copy. We'll follow the same workflow as we did before, and we'll load a Flare preset. We'll position it in the preview window, and make some minor adjustments. Now instead of applying it, we're going to first set our background to black. We can do this by simply clicking on the black background in the global settings. Now that our flare is on black, we can go ahead and apply it. We can see we now have our original unmodified image and the new flare layer on top of it. Now we can simply set the layer flare blend mode to screen or additive and composite the two together. We now have the same result as our destructive workflow, but with the ability to make further adjustments. This means we can reposition the flare. You'll notice we see the layer extents, but this can be easily fixed by enlarging the image slightly. We can change the flare blending mode. We can decrease the intensity and much, much more. Of course, because it's non-destructive, we can always disable this layer, revealing our original, untouched source image. You can even add multiple flares or flare elements this way and combine them together with varying intensities, scales, etc. using various layers. Non-destructive workflows bring many, many benefits to image editing. It's an ideal methodology to work by, always ensuring you can go back to step one at any stage of production. Well, that brings us to the end of our tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it and I really encourage you to check out the Ultra Flares product page, where you'll find a ton of great info and images explaining in much more detail what causes these effects in the real world and how closely Ultra Flares matches them. I also encourage you to test drive a free demo of Ultra Flares, which can be found on richardrosamond.com. See you soon.